Today, I want to go over the two absolute best aftermarket purchases I've ever made for a boat. Boats are expensive and depending on your budget, some of them are just way out of reach. Well, when you go to look at new bass boats, when you go to purchase one, dealers want to make the sticker price something that more people can afford and so when you go up to the boat and you see the pricing there on the side you look at it and it's like yeah i can probably make those monthly payments work well dealers are in the business to sell boats the industry depends on new products getting purchased and oftentimes the, the consumer or the, uh, the buyer is not really aware of some of the things especially if this is their very very first boat purchase and so i want to go over a couple of things that i think were the two best add-ons that i've ever done aftermarket but hopefully if you're in the market for a boat these don't have to be aftermarket add-ons. You can talk to the dealer and get the appropriate products on your rig to make your day of fishing so much better. Well, the first one that I want to talk about is the trolling motor. This is one area where I see boats sitting in showroom floors and they are underpowered over and over again. I actually saw one this summer where I was on a dealer showroom floor and they had a 20 foot fiberglass bass boat, big heavy boat, beautiful rig. They had a 46 pound thrust trolling motor on the front of that thing. I couldn't believe how undersized it was. And I was like, well, maybe, you know, it's just kind of set there and it's not really the one for that boat package. No, sure enough, you know, it, it was rigged tight to the bow of that deck. Whoever purchases that boat is gonna be so unhappy with the performance. On the boat that I've got right here, this aluminum bass boat, it originally came with a 46 pound thrust trolling motor. And under calm conditions, it sufficed. I'm not even gonna say that it worked great, but it sufficed. So one of the first things that I did is I took that trolling motor off, got rid of it. This one here happens to be a Minn Kota Fortrex. Um, the Ultrax had just come out. You know, in hindsight, I wish I would have ponied up the few extra dollars to get that one. But anyway, so I've got an 80 pound thrust four tracks here and some of my buddies are like man that is way oversized you don't need that on that boat well there are several key reasons why this has been so outstanding and i'm so happy with it one i love to fish a big river like the mississippi river that current can get so strong out there with that other trolling motor that I had, I was so underpowered with it, I had no option but to go with the current downstream. Well, one, that's fishing completely wrong, right? We wanna throw up into the current because the bass are facing into it and then bring our lures back downstream. That trolling motor was so underpowered, couldn't do it. So that was the first problem. Two with that underpowered trolling motor in a river system, it just wasn't safe. I couldn't control the boat the way I wanted to. Oftentimes you get pushed up into a rocky shoreline or whatever. It was a disaster. No longer is this a problem. I can be on the Mississippi River in very strong current, put the bow into the current and walk right up that shoreline with zero troubles whatsoever. It is a beautiful thing. The other thing that going with the larger trolling motor here did for me, I went from a single battery 12 volt system to 24 volt system. I've got enough power to last me all day because most of the time I don't need to have the power cranked up all that high. I can get by on anywhere from 20 to 30% power. But when I need it, I've got it, which is huge for safety considerations. Sometimes we're fishing in a lake or a river and then a pleasure boat just comes out of nowhere and we're like, man, we gotta get out of the way. You don't have time to get behind the console and turn the boat on. I can crank up the thrust on this thing whoosh just get out of the way so quickly and then if a big gust of wind comes up or a boat wake comes by that's huge a barge wake and wants to push me up into a rocky shoreline i've now got the power right here on the bow to control things and not get my boat all trashed and banged up so i cannot even tell you how happy i am 
with this purchase. So when you're looking at a boat, a new boat, hopefully we can save you some time and, and anxiety down the road is go ahead and make sure that your trolling motor is on the high side of the amount of power that would be perfect for it. So I, I so suggest that you'll be so happy with getting a bigger trolling motor than what probably comes with it. The second best aftermarket purchase that I put on this boat is I bought a Minn Kota Precision battery charger, an, an onboard battery charger. Now I am not sponsored by Minn Kota. They are not paying me to say this, but I love this charger so much. I want you to be happy with your purchase as well. They are pricey. They are definitely more than your entry level price point onboard chargers that a lot of times your boat kits, your packages, will come with. So I rip that thing off of the boat and I put on this Minn Kota Precision. It is amazing. I have had zero issues with it. I know that not only are my batteries well charged, they are taken care of. Unlike a traditional trickle charger where you don't want to leave it on over a long period of time because in your old flooded batteries, it could you know cook out that water that's in there these chargers are meant to be left on like over long-term winter storage it conditions them it will draw them down boost them back up they're in good shape as a matter of fact i get so many more years out of my batteries now than i should finally this spring i had one of my trolling motor batteries fail and i don't remember how many years it was but i've had it a long 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 time and i took it into the auto parts store to trade it out and the owner of the store looks at the date on it, the purchase date, and he was like, holy cow, you more than got your money's worth out of this battery. That one battery made up for the purchase of this really nice onboard charger. And another thing to take a look at is when you're looking at one, look at the amps per bank. So if you have a three bank charger that says 30 amps, that means each bank is going to have 10 amps and those amperages will vary from single digits all the way up to 10 you know maybe 12 15 amps per bank that makes a big difference on how quickly those batteries are going to charge up so definitely take a look at that as well on mine i've got a 24 volt system for the trolling motor and then obviously i got a cranking battery for the big motor i highly suggest getting an onboard charger that has banks for each of them. Sometimes you'll hear people say, oh, you only need the onboard charger for your trolling motor, trolling motor batteries. The, the alternator and the big motor will you know, charge up the cranking battery. And that's true. But I want my cranking battery conditioned as well and is maintained. And I can take a look in the battery compartment at that onboard charger and see if it's flashing an error code. So I highly, highly recommend getting an onboard charger that has a bank for each battery, including your cranking battery. So if you have a 36 volt system, get a four bank charger. That's my personal recommendation. Like I said, these two purchases I have been so happy with, but hopefully if you're looking at buying a bass boat, you can take care of that on the front side and not have to do an aftermarket switch like I did. And hey, if you're in the market for a new boat, a new bass boat, make sure you check out this video about some key things to consider before you buy a bass boat. I think that you will find it very helpful. And don't forget to go out and encourage someone today. You never know how you might just change their life. For the Bass Fishing Life, I'm your host, Steve Rogers.